Yo! No, that's not right. I don't usually say yo. What do I usually say? Ah, uh, yeah, I know what it is. What am I doing? I'm an idiot. Si! Que tal todos? Ja, 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 ja. Imagine if I did a whole video in Spanish. I'm actually trying my best to learn the language, so that would be the dream if I could pull it off. Anyway, yes, what is up everyone? And because this new year is now upon us, I thought it was only right that I made 20 predictions for 2020 because I got that 2020 eyesight, you know? And this is the part where I realized that joke was better in my head. But before we get into those, I have to give a shout out to this new series that we're doing that I'm really excited about called The Soccer Minute. And it's only a minute long, so check this out. Hello everyone, I'm Jimmy Conrad and welcome to The Soccer Minute. And today we're going to pour one out for Everton. Yes, poor, poor Everton, who truly haven't been the same since David Moyes left. And you remember him, right? The guy who moved on to bigger and better things, which turned out to be getting fired by Manchester United after nine months, then fired by Real Sociedad after one year, then relegated with Sunderland, which got him sacked, or he resigned after 10 months on the job, and then fired and rehired by West Ham? Well, he left Everton in 2013, and sure, times change, and you've got a big, fancy European manager in Carlo Ancelotti now, but it's made no difference in getting your face smashed by your biggest rivals Liverpool which happened most recently this past weekend when the Reds put out a third or fourth string team against the best you had to offer and they still beat you 1-0. You guys suck. In fact, since Moyes left, Everton have played 17 derbies against Liverpool and excluding extra time, that's 1,530 total minutes. And guess how many of those minutes Everton has led? Seven. So my condolences to anyone who thinks the Merseyside derby is real because it's dead. Rest in motherfucking peace. So what did you think? I hope you liked it. Now, these are gonna live part-time on my Twitter and Instagram, but full-time on the Soccer Minutes account. So please follow at soccer underscore minute on Twitter and Instagram to make sure you do not miss any of these. But for all of you loyal followers here on YouTube, we're probably gonna post them here as well. We just gotta figure out the best way to make that happen, though I think it's just uh, pressing upload and then pressing go live. We're making decisions over here. You wanna have some input, then put it in the comments. But they're gonna be mixed in with everything else, so a big thank you in advance for your support of this new series and for everything that you do for me. I am and will always be forever grateful. But now with my make-believe drum roll, it's time for my predictions. And I know you love them as much as I do. Also, I'm gonna split them up into four categories. Be writing this down, you should be. Category one, this is 1,000% gonna happen, so stamp that shit. Category two, I'm pretty sure this is gonna happen, so don't at me. Category three, I really have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, but I'm gonna act like I do, which are most of the people talking about the beautiful game on YouTube, like myself. And category four, Jimmy, you're fucking crazy, but I kinda like it. So how are you feeling about those categories? You got all those? Good, let's party. So in category one, you know the one where it's an automatic lock. I'm starting with the most obvious, and that is PSG winning league, uh, 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 uh. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. Oh, my grandma that hates sports could have picked that. And to that I say, I don't care. Tell your grandma to eat a fat one. And then with all due respect to Inter Milan, who I think have been tremendous in Serie A this season, I just don't see them being able to keep up this high of a level the rest of the way, you know? To close it out and become champions, because I don't think that's easy to do. So I think they're gonna bottle a few games, I really do. And then Juventus is gonna take advantage and win the Scudetto again. But I do think that Inter will win it next season. Then in Germany, I don't care if RB Leipzig are on top of the table in January with their 32 year old manager that learned how to tame horses so he could learn how to coach better. True story, by the way. Or Borussia Dortmund signed potential superstar striker Erling Braut Holland from RB Salzburg. Bayern Munich, like Juventus, are closers. They know how to win leagues, it's what they do. And I'm saying this knowing that Bayern has an interim manager because I know and believe that this group of players could coach themselves. And finally, my last prediction that I'll stake my life on is Liverpool finally winning the Premier League. It's gonna happen. They have a 13 point lead with a game in hand with 18 games left to go. With this type of quality in their squad, it is a foregone fucking conclusion. So the real conversation is, are they gonna go unbeaten and become the next Invincibles? I mean, if they crash out of the Champions League and can focus solely on the league, then it's possible, but I think they're gonna have too many competitions 
to focus on, and I think they're gonna lose one game, but the league will still be there, so an early congrats. Way to go, fellas. And now in category two, which is, I'm pretty sure this is gonna happen, so don't at me. I'm gonna start with the Copa America, or shall I say, Leo Messi's last Copa America, which will be joint hosted by Argentina, and I think it's his destiny to get one major trophy with his country, so why not his potential last one ever when Argentina is hosting it? It would be a fitting end to his national team career. And keeping it international, the US women's national team will become the first first ever women's team to win a gold medal at the Olympics after winning the Women's World Cup. Yes, you heard it here first. It's gonna happen because they have that ambition, baby. Look at their eyes. Last summer is old news and it's time for a new prize. Like Dr. Seuss over here with a little bit of a beat. Drop a beat. And you know what? Let's keep it going internationally because I'm picking a winner of the 2020 Euros as well and I'm doing it right now. And no, it's not England. Sorry, mates. Italy, Portugal, nada. Germany, you Schweinhunds need to restock, especially in your back four. Spain, I mean, they got some great older players like Ramos, Busquets, etc. but where's this generation Xavi or Iniesta or David Villa or Ramos even for Spain? I feel like they lack these types of players. So I'm going with France because they are stacked in every position and they have the experience of winning together as a group and that matters. Finally, for my last prediction in category number two, so don't at me, it's the Baltimore Ravens because I think they're gonna win the Super Bowl and the reason why is simple. The teams that win in the NFL playoffs are the ones that can rush the ball consistently and because the Ravens have one of the best offensive lines in the game and because they have the most talented quarterback left in these playoffs in Lamar Jackson who can beat you in so many different ways, I think they're gonna do the business. And now let's head to category number three, which is my favorite category, even though I can't remember the name of it. What was it again? Category three, I really have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, but I'm gonna act like I do, which are most of the people talking about the beautiful game on YouTube, like myself. Oh yeah, and what a category this is. So I got Real Madrid winning La Liga. That's where I'm gonna start, but it's gonna come down to the very last weekend. And frankly, it's because Madrid's back four is better than Barcelona's. Barcelona's just give up way more opportunities, and I think that's gonna cost them some points and eventually the league title, which means Messi is gonna be doubly hungry to win something with Argentina over the summer, which I should have added in before, but I didn't want to give away that I had Real Madrid winning the league. So, yeah. And then on the men's side of the Olympic Games, if Kylian Mbappe and Ousmane Dembele play for France, it's over. It's done. It's dusted. Thank you very much for playing. But if they don't play, they're still going to win it because they'll most likely play with Camavinga, who I love, up Meccano, Adelaide, Eduard. I mean, these guys are so good and so talented at all levels, there really is no drop off in quality, which is so impressive to see. So, I got France winning the Olympic gold. And then up next, my Lakers are gonna do the business in the NBA Finals. Now last season, which was LeBron James's first in LA, he was feeling things out, you know, getting a temperature about who could actually help him win and who couldn't. But this season, and with some better players, he knows what's up. And when LeBron knows what's up, he wins NBA trophies, which would be a huge accomplishment to win it with three different teams in his career. So if he pulls it off, I mean, GOAT status confirmed, right? And then I got Atlanta United winning MLS Cup for the second time in three years because I think the players got their manager Frank DeBoer figured out. At first they actually listened to him, but when it was clear that he had no idea what he was doing because they were struggling big time, the players took it upon themselves to right the ship, which led to a great run the rest of the season last season where they just fell short in the playoffs. Now I feel like they got it really dialed in and really figured out, and that's gonna lead to glory. And finally in category three, I got Arsenal winning the Europa League. Oh, come on, f you, dude. Now we're gonna lose it. You just jinxed it, you ass. No, I don't. I'm just f***ing with you. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Uh, the thing I said earlier about you being an asshole, that wasn't me. I don't, like, someone else, someone else said it. That wasn't, don't fire me. <laughs> Please, don't fire me. Even though I believe Arteta was a great hire, they're not gonna do anything of note until he's had more time to rework the culture, but it'll get there. And when it does, watch out. But that's a conversation for another time because I'm actually going with Ajax because they got too much sauce for the Europa League. Way too much sauce. And now it's time for the last category, category number four, where I just spout off crazy ass predictions. But I know deep down you kinda like it. And first up is the Champions League, and I like, wait for it, PSG to do it, because they finally have all the puzzle pieces in place. Good health, top, top players, depth in all positions, especially at striker Romaro Icardi has been so huge for them, and their defending has been top-notch this season. Plus, I think this is the last season for a lot of these guys at the club, so 
I think there's going to be some urgency to win something big together before they leave. And as for the South American equivalent of the Champions League, known as the Copa Libertadores, well, like Spanish teams in the Europa League, you can't sleep on the Argentinian clubs because they always seem to win it. So I'm going with my beloved Boca Juniors. Dale bo, dale bo, dale bo, dale bo, dale bo, dale bo. Dale bo, dale bo. And next up, it's ball on door time, and I think the two horse race between Messi and Ronaldo is officially over as the next generation starts to make their mark in a more meaningful way. So, with my prediction of PSG winning Ligue 1 and the Champions League, which actually sounds pretty insane when I say that out loud again given their track record in that competition, and if France wins the Euros, I think Kylian Mbappe is going to win the first of a few for him. Which means finally, I'm going to name four transfers that I think will happen over the summer to round out my 20 predictions. And first up is Paul Pogba, who's going to have his wish granted as he makes a move to Real Madrid. Then Wilfred Zaha is going to move to Chelsea, Edinson Cavani is going to move to MLS with Inter Miami, and finally Neymar is going to return to Barcelona. And if I get all four of these transfers right, I will definitely start believing that I am really a prediction god. Anyway, what do you guys think? Am I getting all 20 of these right? 15, 10, 5, 1? Definitely more than one. Give me some credit. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below after you hit like and subscribe. And let me know what video you want me to make next. Later.